Get ready. <laughs> Just saying. Good evening, everyone. Congratulations to all of my colleagues. There are many reasons why Dr. Glossinger is an extraordinary human being. But the fuel for her grace and strength is authenticity. Our Western heritage invokes the ancient Greeks. Be true to yourself, or as the oracle at Delphi heralds, know thyself. Here is a remarkable teacher who does. As Parker Palmer in his Courage to Teach argues, our deepest calling is to grow into our most authentic selfhood, whether or not it conforms to some image of who we ought to be or who others think we ought to be. As we do so, we will not only find the joy that every human being seeks, we will also find our path of authentic service in the world. We are the recipients of Faye's authentic service for Juniata since 1982 and since 1971 in the world of education, where some 7,000 students she taught in 280 courses reside. She's a real lightweight. Right? They make a difference every day in classrooms literally around the world. Tonight we honor Dr. Glossinger as an inspiring teacher, advisor, researcher, colleague, and valued friend. Nurtured in life and the discipline of early childhood education, Faye has always taken the long view and understood that as teachers, we are about lifelong learning and authenticity. We all know you can't fool children they know when you are not real or true or honest, and they quickly call you out. Trained as a child teacher and advocate, Faye's gift is an unerring ability to be real, honest, and kind. Palmer says that the genius of communication is to be both totally honest and totally kind at the same time. Very tricky. Faye excels at bringing out our best selves by speaking truth to power, even when it resides in a three-year-old. A while ago, there was a popular book by Robert Fulgram, All I Really Needed to Know I Learned in Kindergarten. Now, at Juniata, everything you really need to know, you can learn from the teacher who teaches other teachers how to touch the lives of our children, whether they are three, 13, 23, or 53. Always with total kindness, honesty, and humor. So what does her authentic life look like? Faye has never been afraid to be direct or challenging, as every colleague and administrator here knows, especially if she believes we would be better for it. Dr. Deb Kirchhoff Glazier, Professor Emeritus of Biology, wrote, what I remember most about Faye is her strong commitment to students and for being a passionate, caring voice of reason at faculty meetings. Whether or not her opinion was popular, she will be a very hard act to follow. No one is more practical, down to earth, and determined than Faye. You have a 100-page report to write, a grant that had to be out yesterday, a Pennsylvania Department of Education report of multiple and repetitive pages, which will determine your accreditation, letters for colleagues that will determine their promotion and tenure, or a hundred papers to grade. Faye is your go-to person. She works until it's done. She is a skilled warrior of the written word. And before most of us have even started our part of the project, hers is done. Her high standards are so daunting, and anyone who has worked with her on committees will tell you that her word is most trusted and is always well considered. Dr. Brad Andrew, professor of business and economics, commented on her unerring work on committees. Brad wrote, I worked with Faye on two committees, including Personnel Evaluation Committee, PEC, and I was amazed at how great a writer and editor she is. She helped me become a better PEC reporter, a report writer, 
and he wants to be clear that this is not, he's not egging on for like, the, he doesn't want to be on the committee, right? <laughs> okay. One of the best compliments I've received in the last several years, this is still Brad talking, and it makes me smile today, is when Faye told me I wrote a clean PEC report. <laughs> Part of the reason it meant so much to me is that I think of Faye as the epitome of what a professor should be. Dedicated, hardworking, thoughtful, reflective, a great writer, dedicated to her department and to the institution. What I particularly admire about her is her willingness to do the invisible jobs that need to be done, but offer no glory or accolades, right up until this last semester as a full-time faculty member. I am happy that she is going on to the next stage of her life, but I miss working with her, and Juniata will miss all of her contributions. Peter Goldstein, professor of English, shared that Faye should be recognized for her never-failing crusade for correct punctuation and usage in the PC report. I've had many a stirring debate with her. Her insistence on a comma before a coordinating conjunction that's followed by an independent clause is legendary. It's like, only an English professor in Faye could get jazzed about that. <laughs> Faye has been recognized with over seven teaching and leadership awards, not just here at Juniata. She has brought in more than a million dollars in grant money. She has written more than 50 papers and presentations, served on editorial boards, and testified in front of Pencil the Pennsylvania House and Senate on certification reforms. And when a PDE person dared to dispute her words, one legislator pointedly asked if that person had ever taught in public schools. And he said no. And so the ledger said, legislator said, well, in that case, I'd prefer to hear from Dr. Glossner. <laughs> Quick snapshot, but horribly, horribly incomplete. She served as chair of her department for 20 years, PEC for 12 exec for six, and 10 years as representatives to trustee committees. The Pennsylvania Department of Education has had her review 10 education programs at other colleges and universities. Faye's tireless commitment resulted in a million dollar grant to create the Governor's Institute for Early Childhood Education, which was then held for eight summers here at Juniata. Deeply connected to our region, she has provided incalculable service, training, and leadership in our public schools. Her colleague and friend, Dr. Kim Richardson, Professor Emerita of Education said, I worked with Faye for about 30 years. My strongest memories are of her dedication to her students, to young children, the Early Childhood Center, and her beloved department. Her integrity, her wisdom, her maturity, her unflappable nature and patience, allowed her to deal with crises large and small. She is one of the hardest working people I have ever met and one of the most creative, effective teachers I have ever known. Kim remembers that Faye began at Juniata in 1982 as a part-time replacement for someone, but that there was a very different work climate. When Keeveny was born, Faye brought her to the department just so everyone could meet her and her department told her, well, that was fine, but don't ever do it again. We were expected to be at our desks at, from 8 to 5 every day. Faye never complained and always worked harder than anyone. She redid and refined her lectures, demonstrations, and in-class activities constantly to reflect best practices and current research. She pulled all-nighters if necessary, and her beloved mother used to come and stay with Keeveny, making all the difference for Faye's peace of mind. Dr. Richardson says, all the years I worked with her, she entertained all her students at least once a semester. She always had a real soft spot for bad boys and for returning adult students, mentoring them way past graduation. One of those bad boys, Mr. Tom Hefner, left Juniata prior to senior year because he was angry at Juniata, but he was really angry at Faye. He called her a few years later after flipping burgers in Williamsport and asked if he could return and finish his degree. And of course, she said yes. 
He is now the Assistant Dean for the School of Science of Humanities and Visual Communication at Penn, the Penn College of Technology. Tom was a member of the Board of Directors for the prestigious National Association for the Education of Young Children and is now completing his doctorate. He has become a close and valued friend to Faye and is a remarkable advocate for young children and families. He loves Juniata and he loves our ECBC. He continues to support our education department and last year donated $25,000 to the Beachley Fund. Dr. Richardson also mentioned the parties that Faye would host, and one of her best stories comes from Jessica Yetzi Quinter, some of you may know her in the area, class of 99, and with her freshman roommate, Whitney Kramer. They arrived at Faye's house for a 9 a.m. open house at 9 p.m. <laughs> Jess recalls Faye already in her nightgown, <laughs> welcomed them in, had tea and coffees, and they remembered that as one of the best conversations they have ever had. <laughs> Jessica is now completing her doctorate and is the principal at Juniata Valley Elementary School. Whitney, who joined her that night, has won multiple awards for her teaching successes with young children. Faye has an overwhelming number of students, and many responded. I will mention just a few. Her student, Dr. Dawn Hayes, is now the assistant professor of education, replacing Faye as our early childhood specialist. She comes to us after, after a very successful career as a teacher, reading specialist, and administrator of federal grants. George Dempsey, an accomplished teacher for 30 years and master puppeteer, credits Faye for taking him on as an advisor, and the rest is history. 30 years later, they are still best of friends and confidants. He says her caring friendliness and approachability made so many of us feel accepted and nurtured in the education department. Another returning adult shared a more involved story, so please bear with me. But I think this story crystallizes the essence of Faye's remarkable relationship with students. As I recall, I first met Faye Glossinger during the spring of 1990, when I visited to Juniata to see if I could earn my teaching certification. I already had a science degree from Juniata. I was married with two children. Teaching seemed to be the new path. With two boys, I wasn't sure I could tackle the two-year commitment, but Faye assured me that I could. And as my advisor, she would be with me every step of the way. She proved to be a woman of her word. Fast forward to 91. All was going well. Had a fall semester on my belt, under my belt but found this tiny little wrinkle in my plan. Faye immediately agreed to meet with me before classes started. I'll never forget that meeting. As I walked into her office, Faye was sitting at her desk near the window. Before I could say anything, she looked up at me in a very calm voice, said, you're pregnant. Yes, was the only word I could say before bursting into tears. How did she know? My husband and I had only found out we hadn't told anyone, so she ended up being the third person to know. I don't remember the exact conversation, but I do remember leaving her office assured that with her help, I could have a third child, not part of the original plan, but still get my degree. As I recall, and these are pretty famous words, typical of Faye, we'll make this work. Fast forward eight months, August 91, I walk into another of Faye's classes, this time eight plus months pregnant. I still remember the stunned look on the undergrads' faces. If it wasn't clear before that I had a vastly different life than theirs, it was clear now. <laughs> the class met on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Our third son, Mitchell, was born on Sunday. I missed, check this out, I missed the next two classes, but the following Tuesday, with a week old baby in tow, I walked into that classroom. Now the look of amazement was on Faye's face. <laughs> she announced to the other students something to the effect that if I could make it to class with a week old baby, she wasn't going to take any excuse less than that for the rest of the semester. <laughs> it was actually pretty easy to have my baby in class. Of course Faye welcomed him, and he slept most of the time while she taught and I took notes. If he got fussy, she would walk over, pick him up, walk around with him in her arms, 
all the while continuing to lecture. She made it seem like holding a baby while teaching a college class was the most normal thing in the world to do. She never skipped a beat. At the end of the semester, I remember that she even suggested that I take the final in her office so that I could take breaks to feed Mitchell. I received my teaching certification and I started my teaching career. I will be forever grateful for the marvelous preparation I received from Faye and other Juniata professors. But more importantly, I will always hold a special place in my heart for Faye, who showed me exceptional kindness and confidence at a time when I needed it the most. I am sure that I am just one of many that have received Faye's wonderful knowledge and support. Postscript. That little baby who was welcomed into Faye's class when he was only a weekend old, week old ended up graduating from Juniata in 2014. <laughs> and he is now completing his third year of medical school at Penn State Hershey. So there really is something about her classes. <laughs> Just saying. And her final words were, thanks, Faye. Simply remarkable to live what you According to her Founders Day citation, Faye taught just about every course in the education department, created nine of them, and just a couple of weeks taught her first ever science methods class while a colleague had a family emergency. At first, she offered to mix up some chemicals just to see what would happen. <laughs> you know, to employ that inquiry method of the course. But apparently, sound reason returned. Instead, she walked into class and said, today you're supposed to be learning about fossils. Well, I am one. <laughs> the Huntington area has benefited from the New Vision summer camp she ran for 10 years. And this is where we became friends. She marshaled multiple professors across disciplines at Juniata and schools in the area. It was an extravaganza of fun and learning so well organized, I was in awe of her formidable <laughs> talent of management. It was an amazing experience for both me and my six-year-old son. We both participated. And by the way, these summer camps were residential. So Faye stayed in the dorms with the children. She organized all the evening activities, including dance parties and bowling nights. This program was so successful that the children as they grew up, they wanted her to continue, so she created new voyages for the older kids. These efforts solidified our town and gown relations with children in schools throughout several counties. A strong advocate for study abroad, Dr. Glossinger has visited multiple study abroad sites, the Czech Republic, England, Scotland, Ireland, North Ireland, and spent two sabbaticals as a visiting scholar in residence. Reaching out to students has always come easy for Faye and her husband, Harry. She recalls with great affection many exchange students whom they have taken in and taken care of over the years. One in particular, Emma Quibble Creaney, an exchange student from the Uni University of Gloucestershire, Cheltenham, England, became a dear part of their family. Faye has made friends for Juniata around the world. When we sent out the call for stories, anecdotes, and remembrance, the response was overwhelming. So for all of you who sent words of love and gratitude, I am sorry not to share them, or this encomium would be even longer. Of no surprise, Faye also wanted me to acknowledge to all of her current students who were so kind in sending their thoughts, prayers, flowers, and offers of help when her husband was taken seriously ill this semester. Dr. Glossinger and her husband, Harry Stroop, are ready for new adventures. They will continue to reside in Huntington with their dog, Melody. Their daughter, Kivani, lives with her husband, Raul Avila, in Houston, where she is a life coach and owns her own business called Energy Wizard, the mindful manifester for people, pets, and prosperity. They are a spirited and spiritual family. If you are fortunate, to have a conversation with Fed. You know that Eric Erickson's psychosocial theory of development and learning theory are near and dear to her heart. Even her favorite development theory takes the long view. His eighth stage of development is ego integrity versus despair, 
which occurs for people in their 60s or older who are thinking about retiring. Erickson argues it's important to feel a sense of fulfillment knowing that you have done something significant during your younger years. When you look back in your life, you feel content. So you come to know that you have lived your life to the fullest. If one feels that they haven't done much during their life, it is likely that they will feel some sense of despair. Only authentic integration characterizes her extraordinary life of 47 years in education. Faye Glossinger's integrity, kindness, love of learning, and truth as teacher, professor, chair, and supervisor of the Early Childhood Education has, Center has graced Juniata College. We are the better for her lasting influence. Her mantra has always been, a teacher takes a hand, opens a mind, and touches a heart. Dr. Faye Glossinger has taken her Juniata community in hand, has opened our minds, and touched our hearts. Thank you, Faye, for helping us find our best selves. Good evening. Thank you. Uh, I feel like I should have some wings coming out of my back right now or something like that. Honestly, I haven't um, seen Donna's speech and she hasn't seen mine, but you'll see how well she knows me. Thanks, Donna. Some people like to be the center of attention. They like to stand in the middle of a big stage like this and have a captive audience that can't leave. They like to hear themselves talk and talk and talk. Well, I'm not one of those people. I'm a teacher. So when I thought about this night and being expected to give a speech, I really didn't want to do it. I told my sister, Karen, that I didn't think I was going to have one of those darn retirement dinners. She said, Faye, you need to have one. I'm coming to it. Whitney and Jamie are coming too, and here they are. In Karen's voice, I could hear my mom and dad. Although their physical bodies can't be with us anymore on this earth, and you can't see them tonight, you're gonna to hear them because they're always with me. You will be able to feel their spirit tonight and hear their voices through my story as they live on through me and they sustain me every single day with the amazing unconditional love that developed my soul and touched the hearts of everyone they knew. At age 68, I can still hear mom and dad saying, Hey, you can do anything you want. We're proud of you. My best friends, Joan and John Clipper from Allentown, are here too. When Joni called me and found out I had to give a speech, she said, oh Lord, please keep it short so we can go get some drinks when you're done. <laughs> Maybe I should have had a couple drinks before I came here tonight. My other friends had advice too. Uma said, Make it funny. Kathy said, be passionate. Donna said, well, just give a clear message and be brilliant. Yarmela said, don't insult anybody. <laughs> and Paul and Claire didn't say anything and didn't tell me they were coming until this morning when they flew in from Florida. So they're not in the speech, or they weren't. I just put them in. <laughs> But these friends of mine, don't their comments say something about them? Funny, brilliant, insulting? <laughs> Next, I went to my husband, Harry, looking for some sympathy. I asked him what he thought about this whole thing. He said, look, Faye, I've been going to those trustee dinners for 35 years. <laughs> and I've been listening to those speeches. And I'll tell you the truth now. Some of them were way too long, and some of them were really boring. <laughs> so I think I deserve to go one more time and hear somebody talk about you. Well, still no help, so I called my daughter, Kiveny, who is my heart. She's also my own spiritual, personal guide. She's a Juniata grad, a licensed attorney, 
turned energy wizard, and the most amazing person I know. I told her I was going to go to that darn dinner after all. And she said, well, I know. I bought my ticket a couple months ago. Your friends told me they were going to make you go. <laughs> Raul can't come with me because he has to work, but I'll be there. And I voiced my concerns again about this speech. And she said, Mom, breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. Focus. Center yourself. Channel your inner spirit. Or if you don't want to do it, just tell them the heck with it. You're not doing it. <laughs> well, it was decided. Here we all are. I made my guest list, gave it to Joey and crew, and she planned this whole beautiful event, the flowers. Everything's great, Joanne, thanks. As always, she did a great job. But I told Joanne my misgivings about this speech thing, too. And she gave me the best advice at all. She said, Faye, Nobody really wants to hear all that highfalutin BS they talk about. <laughs> Just be yourself. Say what you want to say. Be honest. It'll be fun. And you know what? Then I knew I could do it. Because I'm honest. I can be myself. I do like to have fun. So, after all, I'm a teacher. But I'm also a learner. So to my, tonight, my remarks will focus on what I know best, teaching and human development. My speech might not be funny or passionate or brilliant or even insulting, but my remarks will be honest and they will represent what I believe in and how I live my life. Hopefully, they will encourage each one of you to think about who you are and help you view your life as a beautiful tapestry a beautiful, intricate fabric created by weaving threads of people, feelings, events, places, and magical moments into your own complex and unique designs. Since effective teachers reinforce all of their ideas with visual aids and to address the needs of diverse learners, there's a bookmark on your table, one for each of you. They look like this. Thanks to Don Hayes, the new and better version of me that will replace me next year. And Heather Bombarger, our amazing assistant who holds me together every day. Now the purpose of these books, Marks, is twofold. First, for those of you who have fallen asleep, it's time to wake yourselves up. Move around a little bit, find your bookmark. Okay? Second, the bookmark also highlights the remarks I'm going to make. Emily Stiles says, Curriculum and good books provide the learner with both a mirror and a window. I think effective teachers do the same thing with their words and their actions. They are mirrors who offer ideas and share stories that learners can find themselves in. And they use strong, colorful threads to open windows for learners to explore new ideas in the world. I am a teacher. And for me, teaching is an act of love. On the bookmark, you first see the byline that's on my email, on the side that says, I am a teacher. The byline says, and you heard Donna say it, a teacher holds a hand, opens a mind, and touches a heart. That's really a little saying, but it says so much. Next, you're gonna see the lyrics to one of my favorite songs, Carol King's Tapestry. Never as an undergraduate at Penn State University in the late 60s and early 70s did I imagine one day I'd be standing 32 miles away, a 68-year-old college professor who had taught for nearly half a century. No wonder I'm tired. <laughs> but this song was important to me then, it's even more important today. And I would love to sing it for you right now, but Russ Shelley would run screaming out of this room in a panic. So instead, just listen to the words, which convey what I want to say tonight in four simple lines. My life has been a tapestry of rich and royal hue, an everlasting vision of an ever-changing view, a wondrous woven magic in bits of blue and gold, a tapestry to feel and see impossible to hold. My life story is a rich tapestry, an intricate woven
design with strong, beautiful threads of diverse colors, hundreds of faces of children, family, friends, marvelous places, events, ideas, and many magical moments. My everlasting vision is that teaching is an act of love, and it is the most important job in the world. I've devoted myself, like Donna said, to early childhood education because the core of our personality and the foundation for future development are formed in the first three years of life. Although my vision of teaching is everlasting, my view is ever-changing. Each learner is unique. Teachers must find new, creative ways to reach diverse individuals and scaffold their skills to the next level of development. On the back of the bookmark, you'll find Eric Erickson's stages that Donna also talked about, his biopsychosocial model of human development. Erickson says all humans go through a series of stages. At each stage, we're working on different tasks. Successful accomplishment of a task moves you to the next stage. If you don't accomplish a task fully, then it may impede your development. For example, in the first three years of life, parents and caregivers are our teachers. Babies and young children need to learn to trust the world, develop autonomy, and take initiative. In a nurturing and loving environment, like the one I was raised in, children thrive. Without a positive environment, they may develop feelings of mistrust, shame, doubt, and guilt. And they could carry these feelings through, throughout their adulthood. So our life stories do begin at home. Learners confront new developmental tasks at each continuing stage of development. Successful accomplishment of the task moves them forward. In their school years, they develop a sense of industry and mastery. In their teens and college years, they continue to develop a sense of identity and intimacy. As teachers, we facilitate this growth and support their cognitive and emotional development. We help our learners create life stories and figure out who they are and who they want to be. We provide strong threads to help them get through difficult moments and sad times. And we never give up, never. And we keep providing strong threads and connections to help them weave their own tapestries. Close your eyes now. Breathe in, breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. Think about a magical moment in your own life. Maybe you're sitting on the beach, listening to the waves hit the shore and gazing across the ocean at a beautiful sunset. Maybe you're with a group of your closest family and friends. Everybody's laughing, smiling. Their faces are so full of joy and you freeze that special moment right in your brain forever. Maybe it was the day you met your life partner. Maybe you're just snuggling with your puppy after a long, hard day at work. Maybe it's a big event, maybe it's very small, but whatever it is, it is your moment. It is part of your story. Can you see it? Can you feel it? You can open your eyes now. It would be interesting if we could all just share the memories that popped into our minds, but we don't have time. Maybe you can do it later tonight, or maybe you can do it when you listen to Tapestry by Carol King on YouTube. That's your assignment for tonight. <laughs> In closing, I will share two very special moments that gave my life meaning and form. One was a seemingly small thing at the time, but the other was huge. In 1978, when I was a first grade teacher in Hughesville, Pennsylvania, I heard a knock at my house door. I peeked out the window there was this large man standing there, this big guy with a beard. I mean, he was standing there holding a bouquet of flowers. I kind of recognized him, but I didn't really know him very well. So I opened the door and I said, hi, what are you doing? <laughs> he said, came to see you. Why? Who are those flowers for? For you, he answered quietly. Why? 
why, I said. He said, because it's Thursday. Would you like to go out with me sometime? That was a sweet, magical moment. A memory that has gotten me through 38 years of some not so damn magical moments. <laughs> and together, we had the most magical moment of our life, the birth of our daughter, Kiwi. Those two moments changed my life story forever. We all have those magical moments to cherish, and we all have some not so magical moments to get through. Unfortunately, we sometimes fill our time with a ladder. We may get stressed by CNN, MSNBC, Fox News, maybe even Juniata College. And we forget, we forget. We create our own stories. But we have to remember, we are powerful. No matter what our age is, remember, we are teachers and we are learners. Teachers hold a hand, open a mind, and they touch a heart. Teaching is an act of love. Love is powerful. Some of us teach for our career. Others teach as parents and friends. But as teachers, we supply the threads of love, laughter, and support that help create all the magical moments that make our lives worth living. At the same time, we are learners who take the threads of life, build memories, and weave our own tapestry to create our own unique life story. Before I say goodnight, I want to recognize one of the greatest teachers I know, Christine Green. Chris is the director of our Campus Lab School, the Juniata College Early Childhood Education Center, and she's Retired last year, but did some phased retirement, was really there all the time, but she's really retiring, or retiring for good tonight. <laughs> and we've worked together for 35 years to create a magical place for young children and future teachers to grow and learn together. I will really miss you, Chris. Please join me in thanking Chris Green for her wonderful contributions to Jimmy Adams College. end of my career. Donna told you all about the work in the, my stage of generativity versus stagnation. Honestly, I've always been so damn busy here I don't think I could have stagnated even if I wanted to. And now I'm in Erickson's stage of integrity versus despair. I'm so blessed to leave a job that I've loved, feeling fulfilled and thankful. And I'm fortunate to leave with my integrity intact. I thank my colleagues, my friends, my family, for all the wondrous woven magic of my life. And my wish for all of you is that you will continue to support and care for each other as you weave more magical moments into your own life tapestry. May Juniata thrive, and may you work together to make it once again the community that I know and love a community that is a wondrous woven magic in bits of blue and gold. Thank you and good night. <laughs>